Let's go through and then create our finished good material because this is where we're actually going to take our bill of materials and then link these parts together so that the system knows that when we're actually going through and planning this, that it needs to consume these particular parts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new part as well. I'm going to do the no sales tax again as part of this, and I'm going to name this my finished good part one. Okay. So now that I've defined that, I'm going to just choose a different item category code. We're going to say this is office furniture. Um, obviously, you would categorize this based off of what your finished goods are within the system. Um, so you can kind of drive that as needed. Uh, I'm not going to actually go through and fill out any type of cost information on here because technically the cost of this part is going to flow from those raw material components that we have. And we want to reflect that as part of that roll up process. Um, I may have a price that's related to this as well. So we're going to say that this product is $99.99 as the uh, list price related to it. Um, obviously, we've got sales pricing that can be specific towards customers or customer groups, or we can have discounting that works in that way as well. Um, this is, like I said, just the list price that we have with it. And the main difference then with an actual finished good part that would actually go through the production process is that we're going to go to our replenishment system here and change this to production order. Now, assembly, I just wanted to highlight as well, production order obviously is for production processing that we're covering in this 101 session. Assembly is for kits. So if you have something that you need to create without having a lot of complexity in terms of a production order, and you just want to create a kit to track some labor and the building of a particular kit product, that's where you'd use assemblies to be able to drive that. So I'm going to go ahead and select production order. And then this is where I can do some of my additional setups as well in terms of my manufacturing policies. Is this a make to stock or a made to order part? And what that does is that represents on the production order how it looks differently. If it's make to order and it has sub assemblies that are related to it, it wants to put those sub assemblies as separate lines on that particular production order. Whereas a make to stock part will actually separate the part into multiple production orders instead of one production order with multiple lines. Our routing number is our labor. So these are the work centers that we're going to talk about in just a little bit here. And then our production bill of material is going to be the components that are required for it. Our flushing method that I didn't highlight on the raw material components, but it applies to them as well, is kind of the default in terms of when you actually go through and create the production order. For example, if it's forward picked as part of it or forward flushed as part of the process, that means when I create the production order and if I had this set up on a raw material part as forward, it would consume that part as soon as I actually release that production order. Whereas if it's backward, that means that it's not going to consume that component as part of that process until I finished the production order. On a finished good part, if it's forward, when I create the production order, it's going to post the output of it or the finished good part of it immediately. Whereas if it's backward on a finished good component, it's going to then post the actual finished good output when I complete or finish the production order. So these flushing methods can be used then to default how you want the system then to consume those parts. Manual is generally for more expensive parts that you have that you want to manually control. Backward is usually for smaller items such as screws or parts that have small value that you don't need to track the exacts with, but you do want to ensure that that cost gets applied towards the production. And then forward is for components that are rarer usually, meaning you want to make sure that this production or when it gets generated consumes that part immediately so that's not reflected within inventory. So you've got some setup on how to drive that. In our process, we're just going to maintain manual as a part of this. And then finally, the last two, the scrap percentage, obviously, what should it calculate in terms of the scrap percentage you're going to have when you're actually producing this particular part? And what should you be producing it in? Meaning if you have a component requirement for one for demand and your lot size is 12, well, the system is going to say, hey, you know what? You need to build 12 of these instead of actually just building one. So you can define what some of those restrictions are inside of here as well.